So we made Lego Tower 1 together, and it really wasn't that bad when we think about it. Some of us might have had some trouble navigating in SketchUp, and this, the zooming in, the orbiting, the panning, it comes with time. So continue to practice using these controls and these tools as we continue moving forward. These scenes helped me a ton, so also utilize those to toggle back and forth between top views and front views and viewing things on an angle. You also might notice that even if I start to pan and orbit, when I use these scenes, it takes my material and it centers it on the screen for me. So for me, that helped a ton. I also noticed that some of us might get really zoomed out from things or really zoomed into things. If that happens, this tool down here, this zoom window tool, as well as the zoom extents tool, these can be super helpful. Especially if you don't know where you've been drawing, that zoom extents tool will show you everything on your page. So if I have been drawing something all the way over here, but maybe I didn't realize it because I was so zoomed in, when I go to zoom extents, it will show me everything I've been drawing. So that could be helpful. But let's talk about next steps since your next task will be to make Lego Tower 2 on your own. So in making Lego Tower 1, we did some Lego math to cut a Lego in half. So we took a 2x2 two two Lego and made it a 1x2 Lego. Now if you remember, Lego Tower 2 has a 2x2 two two Lego as well as a two by four Lego and a one by one Lego. So similar to how we did Lego math to subtract to create the one by two Lego, we can also do some Lego math to add and create our two by four Lego. Since a two by four is essentially two two by twos, let's go ahead, select that component and copy and paste it. So control V, control, or sorry, control C to copy, control V to paste. And we'll go ahead and we'll paste those two Legos kind of off here to the side. And I'm just gonna focus on them. So just like we did with our subtraction, we'll need to line these up we actually don't want to overlap them though, since we are trying to add them together. So for me to line them up, I just want them directly next to each other. And for this, it's gonna be super important that again, there's no offset. So you can see how these two are exactly lined up edge to edge. One of them is not higher than the other from any angle. Once I've got them lined up next to each other, I'm going to come back here to my select tool to deselect everything. Again, I do not want anything selected. And then underneath what is now my subtract tool, because they might have reordered, I'm going to find this outer shell option. And then again, the instructions, it says select first solid, select second solid. Once I click on that second solid, you'll see that it took away that line in the middle. So essentially the math it just did is it did one Lego plus two Legos equals this Lego and it made it its own component. So now if I go to move it, everything moves together. It is one solid now. So we've got our two by four, very, very easy. We can also use this to help us make our one by one. Since a one by one is half of a two by one, we can copy and paste this Lego two times. And we'll use the subtract method again. And we'll line these two Legos up. Now again, with this, it's gonna take some zooming in for me to really finally align everything. So zooming in to make sure that these circles are exactly lined up with each other. And when they are lined up with each other, I should only see one circle outline. From there, again, back to my select tool to make sure nothing is selected. And then coming back to this stack to grab my subtract tool. 
I'll select my first solid and my second. It does the Lego math for me. And boom, just like that, I am left with my one by one Lego. So from here, I've got my two by four, my one by one, and I've got Lego Tower one. So I can just copy and paste another two by two and then move them all to assemble them to create Lego Tower 2. And again, zooming in as needed to make moving things a little easier and changing my perspectives as needed to help with that process. One great thing, especially if you are using a computer mouse, one great thing is that you can use your motion controls while using the move tool. So that might be really helpful for you as you are creating these towers. But with that, you should now have Lego Tower 1 and Lego Tower 2. Again, don't forget to save your work. The last thing we'll do is going to be uh, to save these in a format that we can actually turn them in. So when Mr. Brown and I ask you to turn in things from SketchUp, there are a couple of ways that we might do this. The first way is for you to take a screenshot, which again might vary depending on your computer. Another way is through the menu. So right up top here, these three lines, if you click on them, we have this save as option and we also have an export option. So depending on which option we want, it might be one of these buttons. Today, I'm just gonna save this as a PNG file. So knowing way back from the beginning of, of the year, uh, it saves a PNG as an image. So when I click PNG, it's going to show me a preview of that image. Before you click export, please do make sure that you're getting all of that information in that image so you can uh, zoom in and out and you can even pan things around and change the views. For this one, I do want an orth or sorry, an isometric view, so it's kind of on this angle. So it's going to be one of these bottom two corners, uh, whichever one gets me more detail, probably this bottom right one because I can see the empty space back here. And then from there, I'm going to export it as a PNG. When I save that, it's going to save with the name that I gave my original file, and it's going to save that to my computer so that you can take this and turn around and turn it into Schoology.